Hi everyone, Happy New Year and welcome back to another ShareWise webinar. Today we're joined by Lisa Wade, the CEO of Digital X. Welcome back, Lisa. Hi, Caitlin. Hi, hey, everyone. Hi. Um, so I trust the team at DCC had a good New Year? Oh, we did, yes. Um, we A few of us had to work over Christmas, but that's life. <laughs> Everybody seemed to enjoy themselves who had a break, so it was good. Um, and to everyone that's joined us, remember, as always, you could put your chat, uh, your questions for Lisa in the Q&A chat box down below. But let's get straight into it. So, Lisa, about a week ago, we saw what a good run Bitcoin had. Do you expect this upward trend to continue from here on? I do, yeah. Obviously, with cautious optimism, um, I, I think the, the, there's a big shift in sentiment towards Bitcoin. And I think the difference between this rally and other rallies is really that institutional take up with the 11 ETFs being approved by the SEC, which I'm sure you'll ask me more about that in a minute. And, and we've also got the event of the halving or the halvening, as some of us like to call it, coming up, um, which traditionally has provided a bullish backdrop um, with that caution that, you know, I, I said the other day, uh, there's three certainties in life now, death, taxes and volatility in the digital asset markets, which as we get the broader take up, um, people will, will start to get used to. Mm. And uh, let's get into that SEC question. Um, do you want to just go into a bit of background about what happened for those that are unfamiliar? Yeah, um, I think sort of in the middle middle to late last year, there was a wave of <clears throat> institutions applying for uh, spot Bitcoin ETFs, which the SEC um, had always been very against um, issuing that, uh, approving that product and Grayscale had tried for a number of years. But what happened was really large institutions, particularly BlackRock, started campaigning for it very hard. So the SEC started engaging with the market. There were a total of 11 applications that went in. The SEC engaged with the market, gave a whole lot of criteria, um, and we saw 11 get approved on the 12th of January, which was super exciting um, and, uh, you know, a, a monumental event for, um, you know, those of us who follow the markets and Bitcoin. And we've seen great volumes in them. Um, you know, there's over $4 billion of total trading. There was some in and out with the Grayscale product because they did have a legacy product, which had been trading at a discount um, because of the it wasn't an ETF. Uh, and, and that's just sort of normal, you know, flow that you get. Um, but but really excitingly, um, you know, we follow on Bloomberg every day, the daily volumes. Um, of course, BlackRock are winning the, the inflow race, um, sort of chipping away every day. And what we're seeing is consistent volumes. Mm. And um, what we're hoping is that this just allows for investors to put Bitcoin in their portfolio in a way that's safe and cheap and accessible. Because previously, you know, what we specialise in is man managing digital assets. It's really tricky. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, we've got an entire team of people that do it, multiple teams of people, to be honest. Um, so, so this movement really is, um, you know, about allowing the mums and dads and other institutions as well to put it into their portfolios in an accessible and, and safe way without learning new skills. And besides that safety and security, are there any other um, implications that the SEC approval has for Digital X? Uh, oh, look, we're super excited. We had said before Christmas we had partnered with 3IQ and um, K2 to lodge our own Bitcoin ETF, and we did that on the 12th of January. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was super exciting for us. Um, I think I got the date wrong on the SEC, by the way. I think it was the 10th. I was so excited about our date being the 12th. Uh -huh. Um, but we lodged on the 12th of January, and I think that is something that, you know, we're, we're super excited about. And, um, you know, it was a real landmark for our company being listed. Uh, it's kind of tricky because it's not an ASX announcement because actually saying that we were going to do it was the announcement. Mm -hmm. And then the approval will be the announcement. And now we're in conversation, uh, re really the pointy end of the conversation with the ASX compliance team. And K2, our partner, is running that for us. And we're very lucky to have that partnership with them because they've issued a lot of ETFs and you know um that they're, they're really that that's what they do all day every day is engage with the compliance department so we're, we're confident that we can have a good two-way conversation and you know a little bit like the sec did um find a product that the asx will approve and you know we do we have been managing digital assets for a long time we're actually one of the few companies in the world to have a five-year track record managing digital assets the crypto mm -hmm. fund that we run has a five-year track record that's a wholesale fund and the bitcoin fund will get its track record in August as well, five-year track record in August. 
Wow. Okay. And uh, speaking of the ETF, um, we've got a few questions submitted from oh. viewers. So um, I think you've answered this already, but is this an Australian ETF? Yeah, purely Australian. It'll be Aussie dollar. And um, I, I think just that homegrown um, sort of aspect to it, it'll be in Australian dollars. It'll be issued by us. We're an Australian company. We're very proud to be an Australian company. We employ Australian people. And, um, you know, we're excited about that. We are talking to some institutions on um, seeing if we can sort of partner with them a, as well. And, um, you know, really it's that Australian dollar flavour, I think, that will sort of allow us to stand apart because we are competing against, I've never competed against BlackRock in my life. I've always been too small, um, but we are competing against them in, in that sphere. And um, someone asked, how does the takeover of 3IQ by Monex affect your Bitcoin ETF application? Oh, look, um, it's sort of a, a partnership and it's really exciting for us because there's another aspect to the 3IQ partnership. That, like my job is to really simplify the story, right, and to just be in the now. Um, however, 3IQ have a really great global distribution network mm -hmm. and, we're, and we're still looking for that product market fit for the crypto fund. The crypto fund is actually has a global appeal. Um, because of the universal scoring matrix and the way we do the institutional quality of investment in the token selection. And 3IQ have a platform called QMAP, um, mm -hmm. and we're working to get our crypto fund on QMAP. Um, now, as far as, you know, the needle moves on di the digital X share price, we are very leveraged. We're 96%, 90 percent cor correlated to Bitcoin on a good day. Uh, however, we do see that global opportunity and, and that um, partnership is super exciting for us. And you'll hear a lot more about us working with them in Asia, a lot more about us working with them in Europe. And, um, you know, it's sort of an aspect that I had wanted to bring to the table because it keeps me awake at night that we do compete on a global level. Um, mm global landscape um, and you know I think everyone would know that 3IQ did launch a product in Australia and um, effectively if we didn't beat them we had to join them you know beat them yeah. or join them. Um, and, and so we've got the wind at our back partnering with them and um, you know they're a great team um, that they've really added a lot to um, you know the conversations that we're having and, and it's a really exciting partnership. Wow okay and um, someone asked how closely will you track the Bitcoin price? Oh, look, um, I think the reason why we're um, issuing capital at the moment is so that we don't sell Bitcoin because uh, really we are the Australian Bitcoin play um, and, and, you know, it's a tricky sort of cash flow, sort of almost like a dilemma because we've got plenty of assets and plenty mm -hmm. of money because I look at Bitcoin as a, a, a the equivalent of money a, a, as the price goes higher. That will happen in the future. And right now what we want to do is listen to shareholders. We are the Australian Bitcoin play. We're going to hold true to that. We're going to be the Australian company that does the Bitcoin ETF. We're not going to sell any more, you know, um, even that when we hopefully start making profits, um, I'll be reinvesting them into Bitcoin and digital assets. That is the history of the company. We are the investors in our fund. Um, we've got a big portfolio of crypto and digital assets, and we'll be very much holding true to that so that we so that we are the Australian Bitcoin company. Mm. And uh, we have a question about the cap rates here. So how is the raise going? Are you going to achieve the 2.5 million raise expectations given the share price is lingering around the same price as the raise? That is 0.046 cents. Oh, look, I don't think I can answer that question. I'm so terribly sorry. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll make an announcement next week. Um, and um, I, I just think I would get in trouble if I answered that. Yeah. So I might take that question offline, get some advice and um, email ShareWise um, with, with an answer. Sorry about that. <laughs> and um, any updates on the court case regarding Mt. Gox beat Bitcoin? Uh, no update, um, and um, it, it's a really, it's just a wait, a waiting game. Um, obviously, the board and I are, are probably as frustrated as shareholders on that, um, and we can't even speculate if no news is good news or anything. We just have to wait and go through that process and trust the process, and um, and unfortunately, no news yet. But I, I, it will be that is an announceable. So the second it comes out, I, I will hit the tapes with that. That is what I can assure investors. Okay. And um, one final question from me: What other exciting plans does DCC have for twenty twenty four? 
Oh, look, I'm so like we're we're super pumped. Um, we really are just getting behind this Bitcoin ETF um, and working out. Um, obviously, uh, a lot of the questions I've fielded in the past, um, which sort of something that I did inherit was the sell my shares business. And mm. those who don't know me, I do have a stockbroking background, so that was sort of like a a good fit for me personally. And um, one of the things I've been working on, you'll see, for you know, thirty to forty percent of our revenue does come from the strategic initiatives that this current management has been driving into that business and um, I'm super keen to explore that um, buy my share buy, buy my ETF sell my shares relationship uh, it's no it's a no advice business so it's very tricky with the regulations but there is something that um, you know we, we can look at there um, and um, you know the, the, there's a few nuances to why Bitcoin ETFs weren't successful on other exchanges and having the Bitcoin on the balance sheet being able to facilitate that that trade is something we're focused Focusing on, and um, really, uh, um, you know, with this, the small team that we have, focus is an important thing. Um, and so, we've got one team focusing on the Bitcoin ETF and really getting behind that. And then Omar Muhammad has joined us from NAB to uh, focus on the real world asset tokenization fund or the DART fund. Now, I think that what's getting lost in translation, um, and I'll be sh actually sharing today, so watch my LinkedIn, um, is the comments that Larry Fink has been made. Like he's been all over the news every single day in mm -hmm. America, and he's been talking about real world asset tokenization as what is coming next. Um, and so he's sort of advertising our strategy in a way. Um, now, obviously, our strategy is now next and beyond and bitcoin is now we acknowledge that however we're globally really well placed for the real world asset tokenization i believe revolution that's coming um and that's where 3iq come in again because getting that fund onto their qmap platform um i do think um sort of if blackrock are going to lead in america um you know we really do need that north american presence that asian presence to get that product really fired up um, and, um, you know, that's something that Omar has joined us from NAB. You know, we work together at NAB. All of that DNA that's coming through from NAB, you know, he's really focusing on that. Um, so you'll just see a lot of hard work from us. Um, and, um, you know, I think that, like I said, there's volatility in the digital asset price, but I do believe that there's a positive backdrop. I do believe there's been a shift um, with institutions. We've got a really um, under the radar exciting piece of work with Mason Stevens for everyone to watch out on. We kicked it off yesterday. It's a collaboration with the CFA. Um, association actually um, and all of the students are um, very very intelligent and they're taking that piece of research we did on having digital assets as so five to ten percent of your portfolio mm. um, and working that and um, the question Mason Stevens had um, is what bucket do digital assets go in um, I think there'll be a few different ones and they're doing that piece of work to really level up the research we have in the market because one of the headwinds that we have is this education piece and people not knowing where digital like shares fit in a portfolio or where um, Bitcoin fits in a portfolio or where a real world asset token fits in a portfolio. I've been doing a lot of conversations with larger brokers at the institutional end to, you know, try and get some coverage for all of us so that people start to understand the stock. Um, and that will really help in those conversations and allow us to accelerate that education. And our head of marketing this quarter has a, a focus on that education piece. So you'll just see a lot of, a lot of educational materials coming out for, from us because we have so much internal knowledge we, we just need to get out there and share it really wow it's all so exciting yeah. um hopefully we can do another webinar soon to provide everyone with more updates but thank you so much for joining me once again Cross lisa it's always a pleasure. sorry yeah Cross your fingers hopefully the next one is when we we get approved from the asx but we just need to go through that process all of us have at sharewise have our fingers crossed for you guys <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. As usual, this video will be posted on YouTube. And thank you so much, Lisa, for joining us once again. My pleasure. See you later.